Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I am talking with Chris Caputo, who is running for city commissioner of Wilton Manors. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing excellent. Thank you for asking, and thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. So you are running for city commissioner of Wilton Manors. Why have you decided to run? So I have, I have a very strong desire to run for city commissioner, you know, and, and, and it ties back to, to when I moved here 20 years ago. You know, after growing up and sort of feeling like an outcast and a reject, uh, being kind of a gay, you know, computer nerd, I finally felt at home when I moved here in Wilton Manors. You know, I felt like it was okay to be me. I felt welcome. Uh, I felt a part of something, you know, and that's, and that's really important. You know, when we look at everything that's going on right now with Black Lives Matter and, and social justice, you know, though I cannot say I understand what they're experiencing, I can definitely relate to the need to feel a part of something, you know, and so, so my heart goes out to them. And I'm really, uh, I feel called to and compelled to serve the city of Wilton Manors. And I know that I have the professional leadership skills and experience to really take Wilton Manors to the next level through, through the current pandemic. Sure. So if your campaign had a signature issue, could you tell us what that would be? You know, as a small business owner for the last 10, 15 years, you know, I have always understood the value of, of you know, a good small business community and just the economic viability of, of our area. Right. And so for me, I think it comes down to ensuring that we have a vision, you know, an economic development strategy that works for all residents, you know, and works for our business community. Excellent. So you did touch on this briefly uh, a minute ago, but you know everything that's going on in the world right now, it's pretty intense with the social justice, racism, and the local policing. Um, so what steps would you want Willem Manners to take to ensure that there is equal treatment for all of its citizens? One of the things that I think we, you know, we sometimes might take for granted in Wilt Manners is, is how great our police force actually is. Many of them are from the community. They, they have a strong understanding and relationship with the unique and diverse uh, community we have. And so I think, you know, we're really should be grateful for that. But beyond that, I think the steps really we should take as a city and as a community is showing our support for the larger movement. You know, just because it, it may not be happening here to the same degree as it's happening other places, you know, we, we have to appreciate where we came from and the rights that we've earned and sort of pay it forward by standing up for those that might be marginalized. Sure. So are there any like specific initiatives that you would like to introduce to kind of help accomplish that? You know, I think a lot of it is is just making sure that we are always an inclusive community. You know, I, I, I feel strongly about trans inclusiveness. I think that's a real challenge um, often sure. you know, in, in our community here. Uh, and it's also about economic diversity, right? I think we need to ensure that we can have affordable housing, you know, mm -hmm. so that it isn't just people that can afford a very expensive house that can live here. You Absolutely. know, having a vibrant community means having people of all different backgrounds, you know, genders, uh, ethnicities, sexual orientations, and also of incomes. And we really need that here in what matters. Right. So I believe that you were also, um, I know that you do serve as a board chair for the Pride Center at Equality Park, and they um, are working on such a project, correct? There is some affordable housing that's coming up at the Pride Center? That's right. It's actually been uh, probably one of the greatest sources of sort of pride and joy in my life. Sure. You know, I serve as a board chair there, and that's since 2018. But my involvement has been significantly longer than that. In fact, we've been working on affordable housing there for, gosh, I think about eight years now. And as the 48 units come to fruition, in fact, they'll be leasing soon with affordable market rents, you know, it is, uh, it's a great testament to what's possible. You know, we were able to build that project without costing taxpayer money. In fact, the city of Oak Manors had loaned money to the Pride Center from its uh, affordable housing fund. And we were so successful in raising money for that project that we were actually able to return that money so it can be used for a future project. Those are kind of the that's fun to be a part of. Excellent. Now, I know you were on the board uh, board chair since 2018 and you served on the board itself since 2012. Is that right? That's right. So yeah. it is public record that the Pride Center does receive um, some funding from the city of Wilton Manors. So um, how will you address that conflict of interest? Yeah, so there's actually a lot of ways that we work closely with the city of Wilton Manors. You know, one of those is the Wicked Manors, which, you know, we uh, we pay for a lot of city services and, and we receive some benefit also for those services. You know, the reality is, is that uh, if I'm elected, you know, I'd have to resign my position, you know, as board chair of the Pride Center. I don't want any perceived conflict of interest there. So, OK, let's just say you go ahead, you give up your board seat, but um, that doesn't necessarily change that you have an affinity for the Pride Center due to your history with them. So is there, how can you address the um, like the votes that are concerning matters related to the Pride Center? Yeah, so I, I think that's an important thing to, to talk about, right, because the truth is, I think there's a lot more that the city and, and the Pride Center should do together. You know, the economic impact just of, of Wicked Manor is the Halloween event alone. 
you know, it could be magnified and so much better for the businesses and residents that are here already. Right. So, so I would be a strong advocate for those sort of things without a doubt. Now, that being said, I can be an advocate for those things. I can continue to support the Pride Center, but I'd have to recuse myself from votes that would be financially beneficial to the Pride Center because I think there can be no there can be no doubt that that the Pride Center holds a special place in my heart. Sure. And, and, and I don't want any perceived conflict of interest there. Excellent. So there has definitely been what I think um, has been a renewed interest in politics and even on the local level because of what's happening uh, nationally and internationally. And what I think is great is there's actually a lot of young people who maybe who have never been involved in politics before and they're now like expressing interest. So for all of our viewers who maybe are not familiar with you or maybe you're just getting interested in politics now, uh, what would you like our viewers to know about you or to take away from today's interview? It's a great question. So and it, it is very exciting. There are so many people that are that are feeling the call, the need to get involved and, and, and have a say in everything from a local to a national level, right? You know, for me, uh, I want them to know that I am deeply connected and involved in this community. You know, having been here the last 20 years, uh, you know, I've, I've volunteered and supported nonprofits like, you know, the Smart Ride, Broward House, AHF. I've raised, you know, a lot of money for, for those organizations. I've been the recipient of our fund's Next Generation Philanthropist Award. And I, you know, my, my connections in the community go beyond just Wilton Manors. I serve on the board of directors for the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. I'm involved in their government affairs uh, council and I, and I serve as the affordable housing subcommittee chair. So I feel like I'm a person that has, the, that has forged the relationships, the connections and has the experience necessary to really help set a path forward for Wilton Manors. And I'd invite them to check me out on Facebook to look up either my personal page or my campaign, you know, and, and get connected with me. One of the greatest things about public service is it's really an opportunity to, to meet and connect with the community. Sure. And so I love any opportunity to sort of meet and talk with them and, and, and hear what they have to say and their ideas because that's what it's all about. Excellent. All right. Chris Caputo, candidate for Wilton Manor City Commission. Thank you so much for your time today and good luck on your run. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.